Hello everyone, welcome to the third and the final video of our series on asthma and COPD. In our previous video, we have told you the basic difference between asthma and COPD and we have also discussed about the cross questions on COPD. But now, we will be talking about the cross questions you will be asked in the exams about asthma. The first thing you will be asked after presenting the history, we have already told that the teachers will ask you about the differentials. Now, what are the differentials of asthma? The main differentials of asthma is COPD. Because you guys have already know, the sign symptoms of asthma and COPD is almost similar. So we have kept COPD as our differentials. Now, what are the types of asthma? There are different types of asthma. The main types are intermittent asthma, persistent asthma, acute exacerbation asthma, and special variants of asthma. Now, what is an intermittent asthma? Intermittent asthma is if about two or less than two nocturnal symptoms are present in a month, that means the patient having asthma attack at least twice, uh, twice or less than twice in a month, then the patient is called intermittent, uh, then the asthma is called intermittent asthma. And between the attack, the patient is symptom free. And what is persistent asthma? Persistent asthma is if the nocturnal attack are more than twice in a month, then it is called persistent asthma. And what is acute exacerbation? Acute exacerbation is loss of control or any type or variant of asthma is acute exacerbation of asthma. And there are different special variants of asthma. These are cough variant asthma, uh, exercise induced asthma, occupational asthma, drug induced asthma, and seasonal asthma. Now, what is a cough variant asthma? In some asthma, the cough is the dominant symptom. And uh, it lacks wheeze and breathlessness and thus diagnosis is tough. That's why it is called, as cough is the main symptom here, that's why it is called a cough variant asthma. Now, what are the criteria of acute severe asthma? In, we will tell uh, asthma is acutely severe if the peak expiratory flow rate is 30 to 50 percent of the predicted. That means if it is less than 200 liter per minute. And if the heart rate of the patient is more than 110 beats per minute and if the respiratory rate is more than 25 beats per minute and if the patient is so dyspneic, that means if the patient's condition is so bad that he cannot complete a sentence in one breath, then we'll call this patient is having an acute severe asthma attack. What are the features of life-threatening asthma? That is when will we tell the asthma is life-threatening? If the peak expiratory flow rate is even less than 33 percent or if the oxygen saturation is less than 92 percent and if the partial pressure of oxygen is less than 8 kilopascal and there is increase in the amount of partial pressure of carbon dioxide or if it is in normal range and if the chest of the patient is silent that means there is no beat sound present and if the patient is cyanosed and his respiratory efforts are very much feeble and if the patient is having hypertension and if the patient is exhausted, the patient is having delirium and if he is having coma. If these features are present, then we will tell the patient is having life-threatening asthma. Now, how to monitor a patient with acute severe asthma? We will have to do repeated peak expiratory flow rate every 15 to 20 minutes. And we will also have to check the pulse oximeter cause our desired saturation of oxygen should be it should be at least above 92% and that's why to check that we need to do pulse oximeter repeatedly and we will also have to do repeated arterial blood gas analysis and we will also need to do a chest x-ray why will we do a chest x-ray because to exclude other pathologies like pneumothorax. What are the indications of assisted ventilation in acute severe asthma? That means when we will need to give the patient mechanical ventilatory support. If the patient is having coma or if the patient is having respiratory arrest and if the partial pressure of oxygen is falling uh, or if it is below 8 kilopascal and if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more than 6 kilopascal and it's rising and if the pH is low and falling and if the patient is exhausted and having delirium or drowsiness. If these conditions are present, then we must give the patient assisted ventilation. Otherwise, the patient will collapse. Now, 
what is the rescue therapy if a patient develops severe asthma or loses control at any step during treatment a short course of oral corticosteroid is given the short course of oral corticosteroid is called rescue therapy now what are the indications of rescue therapy if the morning symptoms of asthma persist till midday or if the patient is having disturbance during his sleep or if the patient is having diminished response to bronchodilator the symptoms are severe enough to require treatment with nebulized or injected bronchodilator or if the peak expiratory flow rate falls below 60% of the personal best recording and if the symptoms and peak expiratory flow rate progressively worsen day by day then we give the patient the rescue therapy the next question is how will you manage an asthma acute severe asthma at home for this management we use the rule of 5 now what is the rule of 5 the rule of 5 is the patient should be sitting in a comfortable upright position and he will be given 5 puffs of bronchodilator inhaler with a large space volume spacer and initially 5 puffs at 5 minute interval through a spacer up to 5 minutes up to 5 times within 1 hour that is the patient will have 5 puffs of bronchodilator with a spacer as because the patient is dyspneic he won't be able to take the inhalers uh, as per procedure that's why you have to use a spacer and initially after giving the five puffs we need to repeat the process uh, after, at an interval of five minutes for five times within an hour and even if after giving this th uh, therapy the patient does not improve then we will have to take the patient to a nearby hospital for the definite management now the most important question what is the stepwise management of asthma we have different level of asthma treatment that means for different types of asthma different severity of asthma we give different treatment to the patient and this management is called stepwise, stepwise management of asthma let me show you the picture about the management if the patient is having occasional symptoms that is that less than once a week for three months or fewer than two nocturnal symptoms per month will suggest the patient to have inhaled short-acting beta-2 agonist and if it is not controlled by that we will tell the patient to use uh, we will tell the patient to move up to step 2 now what is the step 2 step 2 is when the patient will have daily symptoms that is the patient will have exacerbation of asthma uh, at least three times in a week or more and is awakened by asthma once a night per week that means one night symptom then in this case in step 2 we will advise the patient to have inhaled uh, low dose inhaled corticosteroid and even if after having low dose inhaled corticosteroid if not it's controlled then we will tell the patient to move to step 3 now what is the step 3 step 3 is add on therapy that means along with low dose inhaled corticosteroid we will tell the patient to add some drugs it may be long-acting beta-2 agonist, it may be leukotriene receptor antagonist or we may increase the dose of inhaled corticosteroid and even if the patient is not controlled by that that means the, the symptoms of the patient are severe and poorly controlled then we will tell the patient to have high dose inhaled corticosteroid and we can increase the dose up to 2000 microgram daily and even if after having this high dose inhaled corticosteroid the symptoms of the patient is not in, uh, controlled then that is if the severe symptoms are deteriorating then we will tell the patient to have oral corticosteroids and this is the step 5 and even after step 5 if the patient is not controlled then we will tell the patient to go for the newer therapies now what are the new therapy available for asthma the new therapy are omalizumab and mepolizumab now what is a omalizumab omalizumab is a monoclonal antibody directed against ige and mepolizumab is a monoclonal antibody that blocks the binding of interleukin 5 to its receptor on eosinophil few moments back we have told you guys how to step up now how to step down if the patient is stable for three consecutive months then 
we should decrease the dose of inhaled corticosteroid to a minimum dose which is required for stabilizing the patient. And in most of the cases, this is 25 to 50 percent. And this is the step down therapy. This is a tricky question. If a patient is having hypertension and he is having asthma, then suppose the patient is used to take beta blocker, then what will happen? Because in asthma, we are giving beta agonist and the patient is already having beta blocker. Then what will you do? Those things are contradictory. To uh, end this contradiction, we need to give the patient cardioselective beta blocker. That's such that the beta blocker does not react with the beta agonist. So if a patient is having hypertension and asthma, we need to keep in mind to give the patient cardioselective beta blocker. This is very much important. And the teacher frequently asks you this question. So you need to know this. Now, what is cardiac asthma? Cardiac asthma is left ventricular failure in which the patient usually present with sudden severe dyspnea and cough with profuse mucoid expectoration. Bilateral basal crepes are found but no ronchi or wheeze are present. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. We have tried our best to clear your concept and confusions about asthma and COPD. Hope this video is helpful for you guys. And if you find our video uh, helpful to you, please like our video and share with your friends. And if you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe to our channel. Till the next time, goodbye.